Hey, hey! Hi, uh, I'm uh, Ofer, uh, I'm a full stack uh, developer, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, creating plugins for Bubble and uh, also about uh, compiling domain-specific languages uh, in general. Uh, okay, so um, think for a second about uh, what would it be like to be able to build your very own programming language. Uh, to be able to use your own uh, semantics, your own um, uh, your own da data abstraction model, uh, or at least to transform an existing language into another language that will support or be more suitable to our needs. Um, think that uh, this language of ours could be uh, then compiled and run in any browser or any Node.js environment. Um, so uh, why then? Why would we want to uh, learn how to transform JavaScript? Uh, isn't uh, JavaScript uh, complicated as enough as it is without uh, us having to extend it? And uh, well, there are a couple of uh, answers to that. First of all, uh, chances are that uh, most of us are already transforming JavaScript on a daily basis, daily basis. And it's always a good idea to understand the processes we do uh, regularly in a re as a regular uh, uh, work process. Um, if you have ever written code in uh, ES6, uh, you couldn't have expected it to run on Internet Explorer, for example, without uh, having to transform it sa first to a safe uh, ES5 compliant code. Uh, OK, so and uh, another reason that uh, it uh, also makes sense because if you think about it, it the challenges that uh, we are facing in uh, our domains or our uh, team or our organization or our industry, uh, they are unique. Uh, they are different from the problems that the rest of the world faces and uh, the rest of the world faces. And uh, therefore, we definitely could uh, express them uh, more uh, clearly and more elegantly this way. And uh, lastly, transforming JavaScript can come uh, very, very handy. Uh, we can use it for very simple tasks, like uh, removing console log statements from our code or removing debugger statements. And we could go up to uh, much uh, more complicated tasks uh, that include uh, optimizing our code's performance, uh, reducing our bundle size, reducing memory allocations. OK, so let us uh, take a look at a couple of uh, very popular transpilers uh, that we use today. But first of all, what is this word transpiler? What does it mean? What, how is it different than compiler? Well, uh, transpiler is a word that is used in reference to a source-to-source -source compiler, uh, which means that the that translation, translation source and the translation target are roughly uh, around the same level of, of abstraction. Uh, for example, compiling, translating C to uh, C, the C language to a uh, machine bytecode would be called compiling, while uh, translating between JavaScript version A to JavaScript version B will be called uh, transpiling. So that's what a transpiler is. So let us look at the uh, TypeScript. OK, TypeScript is a language that uh, Microsoft invented uh, in order to help uh, large projects build more uh, robust code. Um, TypeScript comes with its own compiler, and it compiles into safe ES3 code uh, that we can run in any browser. Let's uh, take another example, also a very popular one. If, if anyone has ever worked with the React, you must be familiar with the JSX uh, syntax. JSX is an uh, XML-like uh, syntax uh, that uh, Facebook uh, introduced in order to help um, the React developer build a complex uh, tree of React nodes. And JSX uh, transpires directly to into React that uh, create element statements. So what's one of the special things about this example is that uh, JSX isn't JavaScript. 
it's never meant to be a, a part of JavaScript. It, it's never, it's not intended to be ever a part of uh, the specification. It's not a proposal. It's simply a syntax that is uh, meant to, um, uh, to be pre-processed by compilers at compile time. Okay, so after we look at the uh, popular uh, transpilings, uh, let's uh, move on to the Babel project. So there are several tools that can uh, make this uh, transpiling magic uh, happen. Uh, but today, the most commonly used tool is, uh, is Babel. Now, Babel is mostly uh, most commonly known to us as, um, uh, as a tool that enables us to convert or transpile, actually, ES6 compliant code or ES7 or ES8 into safe ES5 code that can run on uh, any browser. This is what most people know Babel for, but uh, what makes uh, Babel uh, unique compared to uh, other uh, tools is its architecture and uh, the fact that it's plugin based, which means we can create our own plugins and use them to transform our code. Take a look, for example, at this uh, Babel uh, plugin, third-party plugin that we could use. Uh, what it does, it uh, analyzes our code, and uh, whenever it sees that uh, we are uh, importing the whole Lodash library, uh, it uh, breaks it down into more specific imports. Uh, and this reduces our bundle size, so we don't have to import uh, the entire Lodash library anymore. Um, okay, so uh, before we get into a hands-on demonstration that I will make on how to uh, create a Babel plugin from scratch, let us discuss the process of uh, compiling of in general and uh, Babel in particular. Because Babel is a compiler, but the process you are about to see is common to, uh, to all compilers. So let's talk about compiling. Uh, there are three major tools involved in the compilation process. Uh, the first tool is uh, called the parser, uh, which in which our code is parsed uh, into a data structure called an abstract syntax tree, which is this, just a more computer-friendly representation of our code. Uh, the second step, the second tool, is the transformer. And uh, the, in, in this phase, this is where our pl custom plugins kick in. Uh, our code is transformed uh, into the, the, the abstract, abstract syntax tree, or AST, is transformed into another uh, abstract uh, syntax tree. In this transformation process, uh, nodes can be removed, added, modified, uh, changed, or whatever. And the last step is the generation, which uh, takes um, our AST and generates our code back from it. So we mentioned the three tools. Let's uh, discuss each of them uh, in a little bit more details. OK, so the first tool uh, for, uh, that Babel uh, has as the parser is called Babylon. Babylon is the parser, OK? And uh, this is a module that can be required or uh, imported. And uh, we can see that it's uh, how it's used. It parses our code and uh, returns an abstract syntax tree. It, it is configurable, and uh, we can plug uh, plugins, uh, plugins into it. But these plugins are not the plugins that uh, we can make. This, uh, the plugins that uh, we, we will introduce at third party belong to the next phase, uh, the transforming phase. Uh, in, uh, in this phase, the parsing phase, we can only use the plugins that come out of the box, which, which are JSX, uh, ES5, ES6, uh, ES7. And what this means to us as uh, plugin developers is that we cannot introduce new syntax to the language uh, yet. If we really want to do, to do so, we can fork uh, Babylon, but uh, we, can in we can invent new rules and new semantics, but we have to use the, uh, the existing and supported syntax. Um, the next tool, uh, is called, uh, which is responsible for the transforming, 
is called Bubble Traverse. Uh, it's again, it's a model that uh, uh, you can see that after uh, the code is parsed by Babylon into an AST, the traverse method traverses the whole tree recursively. And for every node it meets, it applies the code uh, within uh, this function. This is how our plugins work. This is how transformations of the AST uh, can happen. And the uh, third tool is pre it's pretty straightforward. It's the generator. And we can see that it simply used to, it accepts an AST or an abstract syntax tree. And it generates our code uh, back from it. OK, so um, let us now see how it works uh, hands on. OK, we will, or uh, I will, um, build from scratch a new Babel plugin that will do a very useful task. It will remove debugger statements from our code. Uh, OK, so uh, it will accept code uh, in this form and will return the, the same code, but without the debugger statement. And OK, so just a little bit before we get into the writing the actual code Excel, uh, itself, let us uh, see the, abstracts, the abstract syntax tree of the debugger statement and how it looks like and how we need to modify it. OK, so I will open the astexplorer.net uh, tool. Please hang on. OK, and uh, here is here we can see the abstract syntax tree. OK, so on the left side, we see our code, a function with a debugger statement in it. On the right side, we see the generated abstract syntax tree. OK, and we see the tree uh, up from the uh, top node, which is program, through the function declaration. Uh, let's uh, drill into it and see uh, an identifier of the function declaration, which is called foo. Uh, and uh, inside there is a block statement. And uh, uh, if we drill down into the block statement, we can see a node of the abstract syntax tree, which is a debugger statement. And this node is the node that we will have to remove. We will have to change the tree and just simply remove the tree that it will not contain, so it will not contain the node of the debugger statement. Uh, okay, so can you, can you put a comment it? yeah. So uh, we were asked if if it's possible to uh, put a comment uh, instead of removing the, this debugger statement. So definitely yes, you can do much more complicated stuff with Babel than uh, in, than uh, commenting out a code section, and we will see soon how uh, how it's done. Uh, okay. So uh, from now, let me uh, zoom back and show you the code of the plugin itself before we actually implement it in our code. OK, so this is our plugin. This is the plugin that removes the debugger statements. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, quite simple. And a Babel plugin is a simple function. Uh, and this function exposes an interface for something that is called the visitor design pattern which uh, the visitor design pattern is a design pattern that is used to separate uh, an algorithm from the data structure on which it operates. But to put it simply, what it does, it will traverse the whole tree. And whenever uh, it will encounter a node with a debugger statement in it, it will invoke this debugger statement uh, function and will remove the path uh, which is the node or the node we, and it will remove this node so uh, when this uh, AS, the, the, when the code is generated back it will, it will be generated without the debugger statement okay so now i will uh, code it from from scratch uh, we will start with an empty folder and the first uh, task i'll do is uh, npm init okay so uh, hang on with me for just a second. OK, let's uh, type npm init. Uh, what this will do, it will create a simple package JSON file in our empty project. Uh, let's see if it worked. And it worked. Uh, OK, so the second, the second step 
is uh, we will create the source file with a debugger statement that later the plugin will remove. Okay, so let us just create the source file for a second. Okay, our source file is ready. Okay, let us now uh, uh, add another file for the actual plugin code. And here is our, pl our plugin, the, uh, which we have seen before. And uh, one uh, nearly last step, we have to install Babel. I mean, without Babel, uh, we, can't, uh, we can't make it happen. So let us install Babel, npm install. <laughs> and while it's installing, while it's installing, uh, we will do the absolutely last step, uh, which uh, in, uh, in which we will create a build task, okay? So that we can uh, run npm run build, and our code will be transformed. So let us go for the package.json file. and add a, a build script. OK, so we have just added this uh, build script. And uh, what it does, it activates Babel on all the files in the source folder, outputs the result into the lib folder, and uses our plugin our, uh, that we've just created. OK, and let us uh, cross our fingers and uh, take a look at the lib folder. And voila, it is our function without the debugger statement. Um, OK, so, um, so this, is, uh, how, this is how we implement a very simple plugin, and you can use it as a template to uh, create more, uh, more complicated pl plugin. Now, another point I would like to show you uh, is that um, the ba Babel gives us a lot of information, uh, except what's in the abstract syntax tree when, uh, that we can use to create plugins. For example, let us uh, debug this uh, plugin for a second. OK, and we've reached this uh, code section with the path. Path is the actual node. Let us look what's inside the path. OK, uh, so we see a lot of information here. Uh, I will zoom so you can see it more clearly. And we can see, for example, that uh, this information, if you recall, uh, wasn't available, available to us at the abstract syntax tree. This is because, and this is not, actually, it's not an abstract syntax tree node, it's a path, which is the node, uh, but we have a lot of uh, information added to it. For example, uh, we can see the scope. Uh, of the that, that we live in, and we can see the parent scope, uh, and we can see the parent scope has a variable called foo, which is the function, and we can see another more information about this function that it, it is a constant. Now, um, why do we need this information? Knowing that a variable is a constant is very useful to us in, in uh, many tasks 
The most important task of all is minification. If we know that a variable is constant, we can change its name and minify it safely. Okay, because nobody will change it. Uh, so there's no reason uh, it's a constant, so nobody will change it. Okay, so um, um, last but not least, let us see uh, an example of a plugin that makes a very creative use with the, with the scope uh, and the bindings. Okay, uh, this plugin is actually a real plugin and it's called the Babel plugin emojification. And uh, what it does, it's very simple. It uh, runs in a for loop for every variable in scope and changes its name, it renames it into a Unicode, but not just a Unicode, a Unicode that represents an emoji, an escaped emoji. So uh, from uh, this simple code, we will get this code. Okay, uh, unescaped, unescaped, what it will do if we run our code through it, it will take a piece of very boring code like this that's not comfortable to look at with too many letters and will convert it into code with emojis. Uh, okay, so this is not supported by uh, browsers yet, but uh, maybe in the future, and this is definitely a uh, use case. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome, uh,